Empire Resorts shareholders have given the green lights for Genting Malaysia and Kian Huat Realty 3 to take the company private. The US-listed casino and raceway operators' stockholders have approved an acquisition by merger proposal of $9.74 per share. Kian Huat Realty 3, an investment vehicle controlled by Tan Sri Lim Kok Teh and Genting Malaysia, already collectively control an 86% stake in Empire Resorts via their joint venture company, Hercules Topco. This holding company will now merge with Empire Resorts, with the exercise expected to be completed before the end of 2019. Empire Resorts owns the Resort World Catskills Casino and Monticello Raceway in upstate New York. The company is on the brink of filing for bankruptcy. Genting Malaysia has said it believes it can rescue Empire Resorts with its extensive experience in operating successful casino businesses. Malaysia Airlines is implementing a vendor development program which aims to cut cost attributed to non-critical parts by 15%. The national carrier says the program will also decrease turnaround time and boost operational efficiency. Under an MOU inked with the Entrepreneur Development Ministry, Malaysia Airlines will function as an anchor company. The rollout will start with engineering and maintenance and its ground handling unit Aerodarat Services. There will be five initial pilot projects, mainly in sourcing additive manufacturing, carpets, seat upholstery, aircraft cleaning materials and chemicals. Sourcing locally will also help Malaysia Airlines decrease its exposure to foreign exchange volatility. Its Group Chief Operations Officer Ahmad Lokman Mohamed Azmi says the program will enable the carrier to create a multiplier effect within the domestic economy by developing an ecosystem for local vendors to support their businesses. It will also help to empower local companies to propel their businesses in Malaysia's airline industry, which is predominantly serviced by foreign companies. MIDF Research says AirAsia X looks set to become profitable in FY20. This is following a stronger take-up of ancillary offerings, especially with the expected introduction of Wi-Fi on board its fleet, AAX's cost reduction initiatives, negotiation for lease rates reduction and the addition of short-haul routes should also help. Moreover, MIDF believes the US FAA's move to downgrade Malaysia allows AAX to consider new routes in existing core markets, namely North Asia, as well as new markets such as Europe. The research house maintained a neutral call on the stock with an unchanged target price of 17 cents per share. CGS CIMB Research isn't as optimistic on the carrier, citing liquidity issues. It believes AAX may need to issue new shares to raise cash. It says while AAX may have boosted its cash balance to 401 million ringgit as at September 30th, 2019, the company's current liabilities of 2.3 billion ringgit still exceed its current assets of just under 800 million ringgit. The research house says its model indicates that an equity raising is needed to maintain solvency and assumed a 5 billion share issue at 8 sen to raise 400 million ringgit sometime in mid FY20. Alternatively, it says major shareholders such as Tune Group, AirAsia, Tan Sri Tony Fernandez and or Datuk Kamarude Muranon may have to extend shareholder loans. It is maintaining its reduced call on AAX and target price of just 2 sen. The government will bear a 10.3 billion ringgit premium to ensure the financial health of Lembaga Tabung Haji is restored as part of the rescue and restructuring plan of the pilgrimage fund. MOF owned Uros Harta Jamaah said today that it completed the transfer of 9.63 billion ringgit of non performing assets from Tabung Haji in exchange for 19.9 billion ringgit. The difference of 10.3 billion ringgit is to be borne by Putrajaya, and in the event the value of the assets depreciates further, the losses shouldered by the government will increase. The assets transferred to Urus Harta Jama'a consist of a mixture of listed equity holdings, properties and one unlisted plantation asset. These include a 1.568-acre plot of land at Tun Raza Exchange, which was purchased by Tabung Haji from 1MDB for 188.8 million ringgit. 1MDB merely forked out 5.1 million for the parcel. The land was then purchased by Urus Harta Jama'ah from Tabung Haji at 400 million ringgit.
Saim Dabi says the ongoing protests in Hong Kong have not caused damage to the company's assets there and any impact to its car sales is immaterial. The Hong Kong market contributes 5.9% to the group's total revenue. Saim Dabi Group CEO Dato Jeffrey Salim Davidson says the group has no intention to exit its business there. This is because it still views Hong Kong as a mature affluent market that serves as a gateway to the larger Chinese market where the luxury and super luxury brands it carries, such as BMW, Rolls-Royce and McLaren are doing well. What Saim Dabi will do is just hunker down and wait for this to pass. Saim Dabi has 1,200 employees in Hong Kong.